In freshwater systems, invasive species are considered especially noxious. In Washington State, the dedicated fishermen who eradicate these species are known as fish stickers. These are their stories. Hey guys, Andy Tran here with Interbark Outdoors. They say if you give a man a fish, he won't go hungry for a day. But if you teach a man a bow fish, he'll never be bored or hungry. In this video, I'm going to be fishing for carp. Carp has been introduced into America over 100 years ago and is considered a destructive invasive species. This means they destroy habitat and also take away resources for native species of fish. A lot of people don't like the taste of carp, but because of my Vietnamese heritage, we actually have a lot of recipes that call for it. So for me, it's a win-win situation because I get to help out the environment and I also get to feed my family as well. In this video, I'm going to go over reels, arrow tips, the arrows themselves, and other bow equipment. All to get you ready to stick some fish. Whether you're shooting from the shore or shooting from a boat, a good pair of polarized sunglasses is a must if you're shooting in daylight. As you can see here, the effect of polarized lenses is very dramatic. You can see directly into the water. If you can't see it, you can't shoot it. And if you're fishing at night, it's good to have a flashlight with at least 600 lumens of output. I'm currently using a Martin Archery Sabre Compound Bow. The benefit of using a compound bow is that you can draw for a long time so that the movement doesn't spook the fish. Recurve bows are very common, however, and they're actually the first kind of bows that I use while bow fishing. The benefit of this is that they're very simple, lightweight, and easy to maintain. But no matter what kind of bow you have, having a stabilizer mount is important. I have my compound bow set for 60 pounds. It's powerful enough that I can use it during the hunting season, but it's not too powerful where it destroys arrows when I shoot it into the water. But sometimes it does get stuck in the mud and the clay. The first kind of reel that I started out with is the standard drum reel. This is one of the first kinds of reels that they use for bow fishing. On the top of the reel is a small spring clip which holds your line in place. The beauty of it is there's no moving parts and it's easy to use. The only downside of the style is speed and ease of control, which means retrieving a missed arrow or reeling a fish takes a little bit longer. The other option is a more traditional type reel. For this you need a mount and a heavy duty reel. This one's a Zebco 808 which is specifically designed for bow fishing. One press of the release button and you're ready to rock. On the reel and the arrow I'm using 80 pound braided line. I have a loop that stays on the arrow and a swivel on each of my reels so that switching out arrows is really easy. Purpose-built fishing arrows are going to be solid fiberglass usually, although my new favorite type of arrow is a hybrid between carbon fiber and fiberglass. It maintains the same weight but gives you a lot of extra spine, and the fiberglass is a nice bright color so that if you lose it in the water, it's easier to find. When you're looking for an arrow, you want to make sure that the sliders are pre-installed, and make sure you have solid bumpers on the back. The importance of a slider is that it keeps the line in front of your bow, so that it doesn't get tangled on yourself, your bow, or your arrow. There are three different types of arrow tips that I tend to use. The first one is the most common. The barbs are reversible if you loosen up the tip. This will make taking off fish really easy. The next kind of tip is called the tournament tip. Because of the extra metal, it also provides a little bit of extra weight, which means penetration. And it's also very easy to take the fish off the arrow. And last but not least, we have the garpoon. The garpoon is really good for fish with thick skins or fish that like to fight. The steel collar makes it possible to take the fish off and is a non-twisting type so that fish that like to spin on the arrow are not going to release themselves. On my bow, I'm using a whisker biscuit rest. The only thing bad about a whisker biscuit is that if it's not stiff enough to handle the extra heavy fishing arrows, it's going to go right through the whiskers. So when drawing, I just set my finger underneath the arrow to draw back. 
So now that we have our equipment in place, let's go ahead and figure out how to find these things and how to shoot them. In the area that I like to fish, I found the perfect spot. The underwater terrain is what I call a rock block. The rock block forms a sort of funnel for the fish to go into, so it's sort of a natural fish highway. And it also gives them a false sense of security because it gives them somewhat of a place to hide. On the rock that I'm standing on, I have a 180 degree view, so I have a lot of opportunity to stick fish. And Zippy's on that little island because he decided to swim out there and get stuck. So let's go ahead and figure out where exactly to aim on these things. Because of the light refraction, you have to aim low. There's a little saying that you have to aim a little bit lower than you think you do. For my compound bow, I've been using the 20 yard pin and I've been hitting them pretty well. When fishing at night, it's a good idea to be nice and steady because a fast moving light's gonna freak them out. Essentially, bow fishing is something you can do at dawn, dusk, or even in the middle of the day, but you're gonna need to find deeper and cooler water for the high noon sun. So let's go over some do's and don'ts. It's a really good idea to put your electronics and your wallet in a plastic bag so it's safe when you fall in the water, because chances are you're gonna fall in. In this case, it was just zip. Also, it's a good idea to wear sunscreen because you're gonna be out on the water and you got a lot of water reflection. It's a bad idea to let go of your arrow while the fish is flopping about, because that's gonna really tangle up your line at the end. And it's also a very bad idea to forget your knife so that you can easily and quickly kill your fish. It's also a very bad idea to forget to click the release button on your reel. When this happens, your arrow goes forward, but there's no line attached to it. The problem with that is that you have to wade in the water and fish it out. And the frustrating thing about carp is that if there's any sort of movement, they get very curious. So if you're fishing for your arrow, they tend to swarm around you. But the most important thing is just to have fun with it. It's a big learning experience and it's something that you'll probably do for the rest of your life. All right. So that's pretty much a rundown of bow fishing. If you guys have any comments or questions, please message me directly or comment down below. If you guys enjoy the video, please like, share, and subscribe, and also check out my Facebook page and other social media. It really helps me know these are the kind of videos you wanna see, and also you guys are a huge part in making this channel grow. But as always, take it out there, bye. Another trade that Benny has is the heat treat. The heat treat is something that separates tops from all their other competitors. Not only are they hand done, but they're all each individually differentially tempered.